thinking about the astronauts read out the gravitational effect of those planets. Hi, I'm Lee, and this is NASA Now, studying Earth's atmosphere from space. We'll explore the science behind Ceres and see how measuring the energy we are exposed to every day can help scientists improve long-term climate forecasting. That's ahead. First, here's what's happening at NASA Now. NASA says it will launch a spacecraft to an asteroid in 2016. The mission, called OSIRIS-REx, which stands for Origins, Spectral Interpretation, Resource Identification, Security Regolith Explorer, will be the first mission to carry samples from an asteroid back to Earth. It will take four years for the spacecraft to reach the near-Earth asteroid named 1999 RQ-36. The asteroid is roughly the size of five football fields that is 579 meters in diameter, the samples plucked from the asteroid are likely to represent a snapshot of our solar system's infancy. Now let's take a look at the past. October 1984, the Earth Radiation Budget Satellite was deployed during the STS-41G mission by NASA astronaut Sally Ride. ERBS was the first of three spacecraft to carry copies of the Earth Radiation Budget Experiment Sensor, which investigated how energy from the Sun is absorbed and re-radiated by the Earth. Understanding this process helps reveal patterns in Earth's weather. Today our special guest is going to tell us how electromagnetic energy that we are exposed to every day can help scientists improve climate forecasting. Here with more information is Chief Engineer for Ceres, Gary Fleming from the Langley Research Center. Hi Gary, it's great to have you here with us today. Maybe you could start out by telling us what Ceres is all about. Well, Ceres is actually an acronym that stands for Clouds and Earth's Radiant Energy System. It's also a NASA program that was started in the late 1980s and early 1990s for the purposes of measuring Earth's radiation budget. Now, Earth's radiation budget is that balance of energy between the sunlight that comes into the Earth and the amount of sunlight that is reflected from the Earth. And there's a certain portion of sunlight that is absorbed by the Earth and then re-emitted as thermal energy. And that radiation balance is a key driver in Earth's climate. How does the Ceres instrument detect that balance? It's got three telescopes, and those telescopes each have an individual thermistor bolometer. Those thermistor bolometers interpret that radiation as a change in temperature. The instrument can measure the total amount of radiation reflected and emitted from the Earth, the amount of solar radiation that is reflected off of the Earth's surface, and it can measure the thermal radiation that is emitted by the Earth. I understand you have Ceres instruments on several satellites. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Currently, we've got four instruments up on orbit flying. We've got two instruments on NASA's Terra spacecraft, and that was launched in 1999. We have two Ceres instruments on NASA's Aqua spacecraft, and that was launched in 2002. We are building a, another Ceres instrument that will be launched on the NPOS Preparatory Project spacecraft, that's exciting for me. That's going to launch in October of this year. How long is the Ceres mission expected to last? The Ceres mission, we hope to last quite a long time because one of the things about climate change is it's a very slow process. And if you're a climate scientist trying to understand trends or uh, predictions for climate change, you have to have observations over a long period of time. So we expect to have Ceres instruments flying for the next 10 to 20 years. This is all really fascinating, Gary. Let's shift the focus to your life. How did you become an engineer with NASA? When I was four, five, and six, I spent my afternoons out in the backyard flying airplanes and building model rockets. And uh, my brother and I even built a wind tunnel in our basement one time for a science project. So right off the bat, I think I was aligned with the NASA mission, whether I knew it or not at the time. And it's just something that has been 
ingrained with me and I've enjoyed it. Gary Fleming, Chief Engineer for Ceres, thanks so much for joining us today. Did you know that Earth has two radiation belts? The inner radiation belt is relatively compact, extending perhaps one Earth radius above the equator. Farther out is the outer radiation belt, the most energetic of the two. Unlike the inner belt, this radiation belt produces large fluctuations, especially during magnetic storms. Now you know. Now it's time to check out what's up. Next time you look at the sun, remember, not all the sun's energy that enters Earth's atmosphere makes it to the surface. 30% of it is actually reflected back into space, and the rest is absorbed by the land, the oceans, and the atmosphere. Okay, teachers, now it's time to help your students create a cloud in a bottle. Teachers, here's a great way to bring atmosphere into your classroom. Check out the Meteorology Content Module on the NASA Explorer School's virtual campus. Well, that's it for NASA Now. Join us next time when we enter the frozen world of the icing research tunnel. We'll see you then on NASA Now. NASA Now comes to you from the virtual campus at NASA Explorer Schools.